medieval times of knights of honor awaits you. Greetings, uh, here is Fred and today we are here on Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign, a strategy game that was released last December and that I already had the chance to play a little bit on live stream on Twitch, maybe some of you remember those live streams. But as my YouTube channel is mainly focused on strategy games, uh, I decided that it was time to bring some Knights of Honor content here as well. After all, this was one of the most awaited strategy games of 2022, so it's the perfect fit for the channel. Sovereign is the second chapter of a popular strategy game that was originally released 20 years ago, and uh, unfortunately, I must admit that I was a little bit disappointed upon the release of this game. And uh, I will come to the reasons uh, later, but uh, I can already foresee that because I'm not particularly happy with this game, the run that we will start today, I don't think is going to be a long one. But let's see how things develop. Now, let me tell you more about why I was disappointed about the game, because I'm pretty sure that some of you are uh, wondering about this. Um, and well, I will say that basically there are two main reasons. The first reason is uh, related to the fact that Knights of Honor 2 um, is a game that tries to move in many directions. Like, for example, it's a little bit of Crusader Kings, a little bit like Total War. But in the end, in my opinion, it fails to excel in any of the directions that it takes. Then there is also another reason, and this is probably even more disappointing and this is also related to the fact that I remember the first chapter of this game. Many others who have played the game notice the same. Knights of Honor 2 is too similar to its predecessor. There are parts of this game that are entirely copied, like literally cut and paste, from Knights of Honor, let's say, the first chapter. If we think, for example, of diplomacy, it's literally the same menu with the same option, with the same lack of visibility on the details. So it's really like 100% what the game was already 20 years ago. And this is the reason why not only me, but many other content creators before me, they have already nicknamed Knights of Honor 2, Knights of Honor 1.5, because in the end, what you have, it's, let's say, an improved and enhanced version of the previous chapter of the game, but not really a completely separate chapter. And don't get me wrong, I mean, the, the first chapter of Knights of Honor was actually a good game, I would say. It was um, a game that was quite solid for the standards of those years, of course. But if we consider how the strategy genre has developed in the last 20 years, the genre has developed a lot. I believe that no one in 2023 should buy at full price a product that is basically an enhanced remaster of a 20 years old game. So personally, if you haven't bought this game yet, I will not recommend you to buy it, at least not full price. If you have it with a significant discount, it might be worth like, let's say 10, 15 bucks maximum, but of course not full price because full price in the hand, you're going to pay 40 bucks for something that it's really going to give you an experience, a game experience that dates back in 2004. And honestly, it's unacceptable. But unfortunately, I got the, the game full price, so <laughs> I'm here. And probably that's also another reason why I'm bringing this run on the channel, because in the end, it's uh, my attempt to make something out of this game. And uh, yeah, I hope that at least you can enjoy the content that I will bring in, the, in this and in the next episodes. But let's not waste other time with this uh, long introduction. I would say it's better if we go straight to a new campaign so that I can tell you a little bit more about what we are going to do specifically in this run. And in this run, we will focus here in Ireland. The real goal of this run will be to unify all the kingdoms of Ireland under one single flag. And of course, to do that, I'm not going to use the current starting date because as you can see, Ireland is already uh, mainly conquered by, by England, so there is only one, uh, one province missing, so it makes no sense to start here. I will instead select the earliest date possible, and as you can see, now Ireland is divided into four different kingdoms. 
I will imagine that we will start from um, basically the area of Dublin and then we will start expanding from there. Coming to the minor victory, honestly, I will not select anything um, because in the end, as I said, we will end this, uh, this uh, run basically as soon as the, the unification of Ireland will be completed, but maybe I could just add peasant rush. Defend your territories and conquer new ones to ensure the glory of your kingdom. Yeah, let's just select it just in case, just to leave the door open in the future. But in theory, we will consider as our long-term uh, goal just the unification of Ireland. Coming to the other settings, I will probably leave them all as they are. Maybe I might change just religious standing to historical from challenging. And that's it. Yeah. I think everything is then ready to start this adventure, so let's click start and let's enjoy this first episode of Knights of Honor 2. And as I always do at the beginning of uh, every run I play, independently from the game I'm playing, I will take some time from this very first episode to, let's say, make some initial assessment of the starting condition, because we need to familiarize with uh, our ruler, the neighboring countries etc so let's start our assessment from the ruler i will say that's probably the main thing we have currently sitting on the throne king donchad of dublin he has uh, terrible martial skills and this is already quite disappointing i was hoping to have a martial king but that unfortunately is not the case his main focus seems to be religion so maybe this will allow us to collect books to collect more books to skill up the members of the royal court right now we have no one there but of course i will have to hire some knights the other thing i can see is that unfortunately we have a kingdom stability of minus two of course this is unfortunate i was hoping to start at least with a zero to have a more stable uh, kingdom but minus two i think probably we can still work around that uh, let's see what uh, what we will do to try to improve this very soon. Then coming to the different strata, um, the population in uh, Knights of Honor 2 is divided into different strata, the nobility opinion is minus one, then we have the army, this is positive, uh, merchants positive, um, clergy opinion is minus one, exactly like the nobility, and then we have the peasantry. So peasantry, army and merchants are happy, the other two strata not really, we will have to work on that as well. There is no family, so uh, this is clearly one of the priorities that we will have for this uh, first episode, to find a wife for King Donchad, so that then we can hope to get an heir as soon as possible. So we will have to check what are the options for a royal wedding. In all of this, King Donchad is already an adult, so we will not have a lot of time to try to get an heir, so fingers crossed, let's see. And then maybe we can move to the political view. view. This will allow us to have a better understanding of the kingdoms around us, to understand, for example, what are the relationship with the other kingdoms, identify if there is any easy target that we might have in case if uh, we start planning the first war, etc, etc. So coming to Dublin, we have two friends in uh, Galway and Munster. This is actually good. This is the only first thing <laughs> I start liking of this uh, initial assessment, so that we do not have any threats or enemies and we even have two friends. It is true that we want to expand in Ireland, so the, the final goal is to conquer them all, but to start with good relationship with some of those rulers, I think that's of course convenient. Um, then we have England here, maybe England is where I should try already to have a royal wedding, no, unfortunately I cannot. The reason why I, I was immediately checking England is because uh, I already mentioned that I played uh, Knights of Honor 2 a little bit on live stream on Twitch. If you don't follow me there, please do it. You can find uh, the link in the description. But the reason why I'm bringing this now is because when I played on Twitch, uh, I was having some kind of test run. And what happened is that I started uh, to conquer 
the other kingdoms in Ireland, and then all of a sudden, basically, England uh, jumped in and completely crushed my armies and annihilated me and my dreams of glory. So I would like to prevent that this happens also in the course of this run, and that's why I would like to, if possible, to set a good relationship with England since the very beginning of this run. Because they are a dangerous neighbor, we know that, and so we want to make sure that they are not going to trouble us particularly while we will start expanding in the territory of Ireland. In any case, there are no possibilities of a royal wedding with them right now, so we have to, to live with that. Maybe let's check Scotland. No royal wedding here as well. Let's go into the Wales area. No royal wedding. No royal wedding. Okay. And in Ireland, is there any chance? Ulster, Galway, no, apparently not. Okay, with Munster we have the possibility of uh, a royal wedding and this actually will be nice because we are right now friends, so we can uh, really try to bring them to, to our side, they are trusting, so I think a royal wedding in this case will be actually very good, it will uh, uh, let's say, strengthen this uh, this relationship that we have with Munster and they could become an interesting ally in the future when we will start planning our first expansion. So let's try to propose a royal wedding, of course, for the King Donchad. And we have even two options. We have Princess Biadmunio, one of Marshall and two of um, Intrigue, basically. For the ones who are familiar with Crusader Kings 3, I use the same uh, terminology from there. Uh, and then we have uh, Princess Lafracot with two of learning and one of intrigue. Um, I think I will go with Princess Lafracot. Let's see. A glorious royal wedding was held. Very good. With blood binding us, no one could oppose our union. May King Donchad and Princess Lafracot have long and fruitful marriage. For the moment, I will leave audience. Very good. So now, if we go back to our political view, you can see that uh, Munster is no longer listed as a friend, but um, we have now kinship relationship because of the marriage. Very good. But we still have good terms also with um, Galway, which basically means, as part of the initial assessment, that if we will have to identify a potential target for a very first war, that will be clearly Ulster, considering that we have an ally here and good relationship here. Per exclusion, Ulster will be our first target. Um, on the other hand, and this is something I didn't mention yet, uh, um, we will see it now as soon as I move to the top part of the screen. Right now we have uh, 1,200 units of gold, which is of course good, but of course we will also need to start building in Dublin. We have 300 uh, of books. Uh, this is something that allow us to skill up, as I said, the king or the other members of the royal court. Um, then we have religion. Basically, it's uh, similar to the piety in Crusader Kings. Commerce should be quite straightforward. Food income, of course, is to make sure that our people have uh, something to consume. And this is where I wanted to, the point I wanted to reach, the kingdom levies. As you can see, basically, we do not have an army. And just for your information, whenever you start a run on Knights of Honor 2, you basically start from scratch. You will always start with basically no army and you will have to start building it from scratch. So this basically means that uh, it will be one of our other priorities for this episode to start building the barracks, etc. Let's appoint first of all uh, a merchant because we will clearly need one. Let's also make a little assessment of Dublin. So we have uh, one castle, we have one monastery, three crop farm, two coastal settlement. This basically means that Dublin is a very good city for agriculture and uh, commerce. And this makes me believe that then we should assign, as a governor of the city, Barnor, Baron Ided, because this will give us a boost in farming gold. So let's do it. Money will flow like a river to you. And then let's prioritize also the use of the books for our merchants because this is way more important, I would say. And we will give them, give him then uh, logistics one. Most wise decision, sire. 
Another thing we will need to do, ah, okay, we already have the possibility to actually commerce with Monster. Maybe we could try to strengthen the friendship with Galway by starting a trade route with them instead. Let's try to do that. Audience, offer, trade agreement. Very good. They are happy to do that. Uh, and then we send the merchant to trade with... Uh, we will make less gold with uh, Galway. But it's okay. I really want to straighten the bond. Very good. Let's build the barracks. This will be the very first building. Then we will go with the upgrades. Okay, let's see what's going on. This is uh, Wales, basically, that uh, demands to attack the other province uh, in the same area. Uh, they must be dealt with. Can you do us a small favor and wage war against them? As I said, right now I do not even have an army, so why would I trouble myself with this? And also I'm not planning an, an expansion in uh, Wales right now, so I think it's uh, completely out of place, so I will decline. But it will mean a lot to us if you can attack them, even on a small scale. Do you like gold, King Donchad? Decline. I don't want the responsibility because I will be the one attacking. So then I will really have to follow up on that. It's not that I just join as an ally. Let's start with the spear makers. Then we will move to the fletchers and the stables. Siege workshop. This will be fantastic to have before we go on our first war but it will take too long before we can uh, stockpile all the needed gold. So probably I will start considering going to an offensive war only after having these three, but let's see. And now we can also start uh, upgrading the barracks for the Fletchers. This might be needed. Crop farming and arbor. This will be the four slot I will use at the beginning. And now we have the request from Wales to attack England. Absolutely not. But I know for sure that if you don't attack England first, they will attack you. Your refusal will be an obstacle for our trade relation. But if you change your mind, we are willing to sign a trade agreement here and now. I really want to have England on our side in the long run. Maybe later on we could support them in, uh, in a war that they have once we finish to build an army to try to conquer a little bit their trust. But for the moment, definitely we decline their request from Wales to attack England. That's out of question. The queen has given birth to a healthy prince. And this is indeed a good news because uh, now we have a little boy and the heir for our kingdom. The birth of a healthy royal prince has blessed our kingdom. He bears the name of Leod is uh, our eldest prince and one day he will wear the crown of Leinster. Um, he's a good marshal and also is uh, good with religion so he could either act as a marshal or a cleric later on. Um, maybe I will pick him as a cleric in the perspective of having him as a cleric. The reason for that is because first of all I will appoint a marshal before he will be able to rule. And second, because once the king will die and he will inherit, then he will uh, control Dublin. We have monasteries one, so I think it could play well as a, as a cleric. So let's go into that direction. Educate. Soon we will be able to go for the next uh, barracks upgrade, the last one that I will have uh, right now which is the stables let's go for the housings now we have wales again they are asking us to join us in the war against england decline decline i will uh, rather join england <laughs> let's say to try to uh, improve uh, mm, the opinion that they have of us Let's go with the crop farming. I would say that probably we can end the episode here for today because in the end, as promised, I managed to take care of the initial assessment in the course of this episode. And I will say that we 
have already prepared the, the foundation for this uh, for this run. We found some allies in Munster. We have good relationship with Galway. Ulster is our ideal target for the first uh, expansion. Ideally, managing also to bring Munster and Galway on our side before we declare war. Um, we will need to have a marshal anyway before we take any military action. And it would be nice also before that to have a diplomat, so at least two other roles in the royal court. The diplomat will be useful because then we could um, have an invasion plan of Ulster. Coming to the, to the city of Dublin, we already started developing the city significantly. We still have the kingdom stability at minus two, but I am confident or at least hopeful that we can fix this in the short run. And the strata of the population seem to be more or less happy with the exception of the clergy that is at still at minus one, uh, but I think we can survive uh, for some time with this uh, malus. So that's basically all for today. Said so, guys, uh, as always, I hope to see you in the next video. And should that be the case, yeah, see you in the next video, guys. <laughs> Cheers.